Okay, so for all of you who just want me to buy a big box filled with all sorts of ephemera items, we're gonna do that here because this box here says $2 for everything. So let's take a look at what we've got inside of here. Well, here we are, folks, at our next estate sale. We are in Auburn, New York, in Cayuga County, right off of Owasco Lake, which you could see down there. It is a beautiful area, uh, one of the Finger Lakes here in central New York, and we are looking for a house that is loaded with collectibles. So I am really excited, and uh, we're gonna find a house here, get parked, and get ready. All right, here it is, folks. It is very windy out. We can take a quick little sneak peek. So looks like an interesting uh, sized house here. I like all the different uh, diagonals and stuff in the house there. It's really neat, all these little nooks and crannies probably. So uh, we'll get ready. Uh, sale starts in about 45 minutes. All right, they let everyone in 15 minutes early. So we're gonna head in right now. Here we go. All right, we're in. All right, first thing I see that grabs my eye is this $5 vintage poster advertisement with Coca-Cola on it. Plus, it's local to Auburn, New York, and it has the Auburn Astros on it, which is great. So there's some baseball linkage here. So five bucks, great shape. We're gonna start with this. All right, so that's where we were. And then right here, we have this box of ephemera. So we've got standard oil here. Um, we've got all sorts of newspapers. This one dates back to 1932. Here's an example of something. Look at that nice convention program from 1959. That looks really nice. That would be something I would want. Here's a nice picture right here, black and white. Uh, we've got one here, and then we've got one on the back as well. Looks like the same person. People really like these black and white photos, so definitely want to get this. You know, I think I'm just gonna pick out individual things here, because I don't want to get charged like a buck, you know, for each one of these pieces of paper that aren't worth anything. So let's keep looking. All right. Let's take a look here and look what we have. Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle. And look here, there's a second one as well. Uh, these signatures are not original though, because you could see they're literally in exactly the same place and they look exactly the same and they're identical. So, but cool pieces for just a dollar a piece. So we'll add this as well. All right, this one looks pretty old. Old favorite songs. And uh, this is linked to the National Bank of Auburn. I like the imagery yeah. on the front. So yeah. uh, really, really cool. So we're gonna get that one. All right, here's something interesting. Detroit auto painting. Nice little card here. Definitely cool for automobile fans. And uh, it looks like it might be a postcard. So that's really neat. We'll grab that one. And then look at this. We've got some art here for Roy's Auburn Diner. That really looks cool. So, you know, if you look online, you'll see there are a plenty of items that sell that are local to Auburn. So, you know, sometimes when you could find something from, you know, a, like a smaller city like this, there'll be some interest in it. So, yeah, I'm gonna get this as well. I love it. All right, keep looking here. Uh, I'm not interested in that one, the church one, but look over here, I love stuff that's associated with Victor Records. And this has been kept in great shape. So uh, it also has this, a 15 cent copy behind it, which is nice and old. And a catalog here as well. So three things for a buck in this one package. All right, so these two that I showed earlier, I'm just gonna grab these and add them to our little lot here. So, uh, pick them up there from the same uh, 
publication as Boot and Shoe from the 1930s. And then there are some really cool, uh, much older church-related items here that I really like, like this one to the Methodist Episcopal Church dates back to 1885. And then we've got some other old ones to go along with it. So, you know, three items for a buck. That's great. And then uh, let's see, what else do we have here? We'll keep digging and see. All right, here's one that I like. Uh, it's, it's been protected really well in this plastic sleeve. This one dates back to 1920. It's a directory for the Wall Street Methodist Episcopal Church. And then we also have one here from 1930. So two for one, awesome. One of the things Auburn, New York is known for is their correctional facility. And this is a great piece right here. It's nice and old and I love the imagery on it. Black and white, really cool. We're gonna add this to the mix. And here's some other stuff that's correctional and prison related. Uh, this is an old document related to Auburn State Prison. So that's pretty cool. And then we have this one here which says Auburn Prison on it. Looks like it's a bulletin about the prison. It dates back to 1949. That is amazing. And then we've got another one here as well from 1949. So it's June, and then this one is May. So May and June, back-to-back -back issues. Awesome. I'm gonna get a bulk deal on this stuff anyway, so I'd rather get the bulk deal for the stuff I want and leave the stuff I don't want behind. Okay, so for all of you who just want me to buy a big box filled with all sorts of ephemera items, we're gonna do that here because this box here says $2 for everything. So let's take a look at what we've got inside of here. Uh, we've got lots of old paper items here. Look at this, we've got something from the Mets. A roster and schedule, for example, from 1977. I was told that the people who live here, or who lived here, were baseball fans. So I think we're gonna find a lot of baseball-related ephemera items. So I'm seeing a bunch of schedules, uh, some of which have the beer logo on it. Look at that, Minnesota Twins, 1974 schedule. And look at this stuff, this is in great condition. Um, we've got the Houston Astros here. I'm not gonna be able to show you every single item, but look at this, 1974 Orioles. Uh, look at this, here's another Orioles item, 1974. Uh, this is crazy, there's another one. Uh, 1975 Boston Red Sox. $2 for this whole box, folks. This is amazing. Look at this. California Angels, and we've got the Chevron on it. I mean, this box is a freaking gold mine. The Yankees. That's my team, the Yankees. So we've got the Yankees here. Oh my gosh, Cleveland Indians. Um, oh my gosh, look at this. Detroit Tigers television with Pepsi on it. I'm a big Pepsi fan, so this is cool. And these are just in great shape. They're just like sat in this box for the longest time. There's just like a zillion of these things. It just doesn't end. Look at this. You could just sell each one of these things individually or you could put little lots together. Let's take a look at what some of these bigger pieces are because there's a lot of these schedules. Let's see, what's this? Watch the Tigers on TV. Okay, it's another schedule, but it's a little bit bigger, but it has Pabst Blue Ribbon on it. So, okay, there's a ton of stuff in there. Um, my gosh, we got Chicago Cubs schedule. So it looks like this whole thing is baseball schedules for the most part. I say that and now here I pick out a hockey one, but uh, let's see, what else do we got? Um, okay, so there's a hockey one. Seventy three, seventy four. Okay, so there's some other sports in here besides baseball, but it still does look like it's mostly baseball related. Okay, so uh, I'll go through some more of this later uh, on my own, but you get the sense of what's in here. This is this is just such a great deal. All right, I can't. I'm so excited about this. We gotta give this box a double tap and seal it up. All right, so below here, there's a dollar box, but this is more modern items. Like you can see here, 2013, you know, 2007, so we'll pass on this stuff. 
Binders. All right, so as you can see, there are binders here, and the cost is a dollar per page. So I'm not gonna buy all of the binders. There's some things in here like this that I'm just not interested in. But to speed this up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick things out of the binders and then show you what I wound up getting. So I love this. The imagery on this is great with Jesus. It's nice and um, colorful. Love the blue on it. And um, this dates back to 1956. So a lot of plays, auditorium, um, ephemera. This is another example right here. Dates back to 1953. I love the the drawing on there it's really nice and sometimes there's stuff on the back too that's just like an extra add-on here's another one roaring 20s dates back to 1955 here's an old uh, treasury bond or something on the back as well from the finger lakes region uh, this is a nice television and radio program probably dates back to the 50s i would guess and then there's like an old baby book on the back uh, colgate uh, so that's uh local uh, college uh, in this area and uh, there's an old band uh, program as well and uh, so that's what i picked out of this one and we'll just toss it in the box all right here's another binder and i found two things in here i love this national guard ball program look at that image on top of the, of the uh, national guardsman and then it's from 1964 so nice and vintage then we have a nice letter here written about Wheeler Rifles in 1906. It's like a, uh, something legal, government related, and uh, something handwritten on the back too. So let's pick these two up. This particular binder is a little thin, but uh, I was able to find two things in here. I like this Tournament of Champions um, program. This is from 1956, great image on it. And there's a spring update on the back from the Auburn Civic Theater, and uh, that looks like an old one as well. And then we've got a merry-go-round playhouse program from 1977. So, and there's some other things in there too, some some bonus items that I'll explore a little bit later. So, look at this. There's just there's just extra stuff. We'll have to find out some of these additional goodies later. So that'll add some mystery to it for me. All right, here's another binder, and look at this, more Coca-Cola stuff. Actually, uh, a nice uh, lady who was um, talking to me, watches the channel uh, with her grandson, uh, saw this and, and gave it to me. She's not a reseller, so that's very nice of her. Thank you so much. And then we have, this is like a book about Auburn City Hospital. Well, a journal, but it feels like a book. It's pretty thick. And it dates back to 1941. Then we have something in the back as well. And look at this. We've got um, the Fraternal Order of Eagles. It's like a little leather um, enclosure here. I'm not sure what's inside of it, so I'll try to get it out of here and take a look if there's anything inside. Looks like a little billfold. Uh, you would store something in here. What do we got here? Oh, it's a receipt. It's a receipt. There we go. That is cool. Wow. Folds over and stuff. It's got a signature on it. Very nice. And then look at this. We've got this YMCA patch. And it has a really nice um, felt fabric to it. And it's really old, first year. So anything that says first on it, Willowbrook Day Camp, but YMCA, that's really cool. So yeah, we're gonna grab all this. Oh look, here's another thing here. It's associated with a lodge, uh, General Gordon Lodge from 1903. This place is a jackpot, folks, jackpot. All right, so this binder here is pretty thick, but it's mostly filled with receipts. Now, receipts could sometimes be good to pick up. It depends on what's on the receipt. So I try to find ones that are associated with like a famous company or something that's like, um, you know, super old, located in like a very unique place. Uh, these are pretty generic ones right here, um, but I did find a couple things in there. Uh, this is an old Pontiac one from 74, and I actually like this one better, this Texaco one from 1964. So I'm gonna grab that. And speaking of cars, I found this picture in there uh, of the uh, uh, love bug. We used to call it punch buggies back in the day, uh, but the Volkswagen Beetle, really cool. You've got this nice corner store here, orange color. That's really neat. So uh, shout out to all the Herbie fans uh, in the house who remember the, the Herbie movies. Uh, give, me a, give me a comment down below if you used to watch those. 
All right, so this one here, pretty thick, but it's mostly filled with more uh, modern stuff or stuff that's just not too interesting. But I did pick out a couple of interesting things. I love this stunt night from 1918. So if you read this, a stunt from every class that will make you laugh. That's hilarious. We've got this really cool uh, old postcard, which is probably that Bible school slash church. And then on the back, I love this father and son banquet from 1941 and this church dedication from 1891. Wow. All right, let's grab that. All right, so as you can see here, this one says copies of Auburn photos and copies are not going to be valuable because people want original. So you can see that these are copies right here that were uh, pinned up at some time. So even though they're cool, I'm not gonna pick them up, but I was flipping through it. And I came across this one, which is an original, and it says Freddie Laxton Club Dickman Orchestra. So that's pretty cool, I like that one. And then uh, in here, tucked in the back, we have another original. And this is Beacon Milling Company. And look at that picture. Look at all the people there. And this, you know, when I list this, what I would do is magnify this and, um, you know, really give people a good look at the faces in here. So that's just a little technique I use for my listing. So I love this. It comes in this little matted frame here. So we'll get that as well. All right, everyone, this video would literally be like 10 hours long if I showed you every single item in these binders. Uh, this one is mostly receipts again. Uh, I did find some cool things though. Look at this one, this Hop Along Cassidy right here. How cool is that? That's on the back of this receipt dated to 1957 from a, uh, a dairyman's uh, league. So that's really cool because it has the word dairy in it. So people like that too. This is an old um, druggist letter, it looks like, uh, dated 1897. So that's really neat. And this one is amazing. Look at this John Rowling uh, Ring Circus. That is really cool. So it looks like it's a piece of letterhead paper, but I love the uh, coloring on it the red, white, and blue, very patriotic. And so and we're going to pick this one up too. It is amazing. All right, here's a couple other pieces I found. The Rexall magazine from 1930. It's a Christmas issue. Uh, beautiful lady on the front. I love it. Uh, this one here, Ezra Kendall telling spots of wit and humor. So it's like a, a joke book in a way. Uh, I don't know the date on it, but this thing looks pretty old. It's got to be early 1900s, maybe 1800s. Uh, this is a medical almanac from 1906. Um, look at the look at the picture. That's really cool. It has the old building on it, and it's got like a calendar on the back. Really neat. And then we have Royal Homes Beautiful. Um, this looks like some type of advertisement. There's a couple of them in there. And then we have this one as well. Um, eh, it's got some damage on the bottom, but yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm, gosh, should I keep this one or take this one? It's pretty, oh, look at that. It's really beat up on the back there. It's really torn up there. So I think I'll leave that one there for someone else and I'll just grab these other ones uh, here. All right, I think that does it for this section. And now we're gonna move on to some other areas. Wow, this is insane. Look at all this stuff that I got so far. My God. All right, $400 for the painting. I think I'll pass on the painting. All right, so down below the table here, there is an encyclopedia set. It's the Golden Home and High School encyclopedia set. It is complete. There's supposed to be 20 volumes and all 20 of them are here. Uh, the cost though is 25 bucks. Uh, they would go for about 60 to 65. So, you know, given the weight and the cost now of medium mail shipping. Sometimes it's actually cheaper to ship things around Advantage, but it's just not enough money for the amount of bulk and the weight and the size of the box you need for this. So I'm gonna leave this here for the 25, but if you can get them for cheaper, and sometimes you can, it could be worth picking up. All right, so many of you probably remember Joyce. Uh, she's a, a follower of the channel and she knows I look for glass, so she's been helping me at estate sales find glass items and she's found some amazing pieces uh, in the past, uh, including a really cool Murano piece. But as you know, I've been looking for my first carnival glass piece for a while and uh, looks like Joyce found it for me right here. This is Northwood Marigold 
And this particular piece right here is hard to find. This one, not so much. Uh, this vase would be like a $30 vase. Now it's five bucks, but I think I'm just gonna stick with this one here. It's nice and sturdy, strong, no chips or anything like that. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up. I have my paper with me and uh, we'll go for this one. All right, now the nice lady who helped me out before with the Coca-Cola ephemera item uh, found this in another uh, location and brought it over to me because uh, she thought I'd be interested in it. And look at this. Uh, this has been well protected in this pennant sleeve that looks like it was just a homemade pennant sleeve. And um, it says Miller, Auburn, the city we're in. And it's in great shape. Uh, there's no price on it, but I was told it was $10, so I'm going to pick it up. It's a nice piece here. All right, so this is the kitchen area here, and uh, there are some old cigarettes here, these Salem's, but can't sell cigarettes on eBay, like actual cigarettes, so we're gonna leave those there. Uh, this is pretty cool, though. I like this. I was just talking to Esme recently about that cat throw in the prior video. Uh, I didn't pick it up, because it was only worth like 20 bucks, and I didn't want to price it higher, even though, you know, some people here might have paid more. Uh, but this is, uh, an interesting piece because this saying here if you want the best seat in the house move the cat I could also say that about Daisy uh, for sure <laughs> but um, usually when you see these they don't actually have the cat imagery on it so you know it's not that old of a piece but it's only three dollars and um, you know I think people like it so I'm gonna pick this one up for the three bucks All right, so looking through the cabinets, nothing in these two. Then we'll look over here, and there are some glasses up top. There's some plain ones here. Uh, Syracuse University ones, those are pretty common, so that's not that old. Uh, golf classics, nah. Let's see, what's this? Cayuga County Office for the Aging. No, no one's gonna be interested in that. Ooh, look at this. This is cool, I love the orange color on this. The Syracuse is known for its orange. It's Syracuse Orange is the name of the school. And the mascot is out of the orange. And there's a famous restaurant uh, supply company here in Syracuse named uh, Smith Restaurant Supply. And I really like this image here where we have the woman on it and you've got the measuring lines here. I think someone's gonna be interested in this. It has this little spot on here, but I don't think that's a, a big deal. So yeah, let's pick this one up. It'll probably just be like a buck or something. So that's a nice piece. Hey, you can see it a little better uh, when I put it in this light and that white spot came off. It was just a little piece of paint, but yeah, all right, cool. All right, some of you have probably been eyeing this bread box, which is pretty cool. I mean, this thing is huge. I really love the apples on it. Very neat. Um, the reason why it's priced at eight bucks, though, is because if you look on the side, there's this big gouge going across. So every once in a while, I'll pick up a bread box, depending on the features of it. But, you know, I'd have to mark it down because of this. And it's gonna be, oops, it's gonna be uh, expensive to ship because, you know, of the size of it and the weight. So I wanna leave it here. But, you know, probably a cool item for someone to, you know, pick up for themselves who lives around here. Oh well. All right, so right next to the bread box, there are these pastel tumblers. Now, they're six bucks for all of them, which sounds like a good deal, but. There is some chipping, which you would expect because it's old. I mean, it's plastic, not glass. Uh, there's some cracking on the side as well that you could see. It doesn't go all the way through. Uh, the problem for me really more is that it doesn't have any kind of maker's mark on it or company like Tupperware or anything like that, which would make it more desirable. So uh, for that reason, I'm gonna leave these uh, here for the six bucks for somebody else. Um, However, I was looking over here 
You may remember me picking something like this up. In fact, I found the exact one at a garage sale for five bucks and uh, it sold fast. The blenders are great, the Asterizer. I sometimes look for specific features like this switch right here. There's not a, another one of these on the market right now that has this switch. So if someone's looking for that specifically and there's not another one on the market, they'll pay up for it. Uh, the Osterizer Imperial Pulsematic 10s, they could go for up to $70. It does depend on the features. This particular one is sold for $35 bucks before, but like I said, there's not another one on the market, so I'd price it higher than that. So I plugged it in. We have to see if it works, though, so let's see. It works, so we're gonna pick this up for $5. That's a, a great buy. All right, so just to orient you, that's where we were in the kitchen. That is the laundry room, and that's the main entrance we came in originally. And this is this interesting little side room off of the main entryway, which is interesting. So we're gonna explore here and uh, see if there's any interesting items to pick up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I hear the music. That must mean, hey, prime time. Oh boy, look what we got over here. <laughs> We've got a cheerleader wearing the letter A. A for Auburn. Uh, I'm not sure how old she is <laughs> because while she has these old looking footings, she looks pretty new, but eh. I don't know, maybe someone from the Auburn area would like it. Um, put it on eBay for everyone. So, yeah, we'll pick it up for five bucks, why not? <laughs> All right, now check this out. Below where the doll was, uh, she was giving me a little secret on uh, where to find something else. Look at this set. We've got the creamer and the sugar, the marigold coloring again. Um, really nice, this one stands out a lot more. On the bottom it says sugar bowl from Grandma Obine, which is, pretty neat. It's got the footings on the bottom. It has the top, which is key because a lot of times this gets broken or lost. So we have the top on this uh, and it's $10 for the set, which is nice because right now the cheapest you could find this set with the lid would be 70 bucks shipped. So for $10, I'm definitely going to pick this up. It's got the butterfly and berry pattern is what they call it there. So you see butterfly right there, and there's your berries. So love the piece, and I don't see or feel any chipping on it either. So excited about these two. Nice. Well, while I'm at it, I might as well get the carnival glass ashtray too. And yeah, you can see here, when it has this oil slick look, I might have said that earlier, but uh, just in case, when it has that, that's how you know it's a carnival glass. So yeah, we're gonna pick that up. Uh, this is interesting, this Ivanhoe tomato cocktail. I've never seen this before. It doesn't have the lid, but I love this shape to it. It's really cool. Uh, we're gonna pick this up for the three. All right, this is pretty cool below. We've got this set of 10 Owen, Illinois green glass canisters. Uh, some of them are labeled here. Some have faded off a bit. We've talked about the Owen, Illinois glass brand before. They made the green glass gallon jugs that you see me pick up for like five bucks. I uh, cleaned them up. Uh, I remember someone laughing at me in the comments telling me I'd never sell it for more than $25. Well, I sold it for $90, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, always look for the logo here. There's the O inside the arrows there for Owen, Illinois. So, okay. Uh, bars of soap, I always look for old bars of soap. They're just so easy to list and sell. This is the Colgate Octagon one. This is made also uh, by the Palmolive brand, which you can see here. So that's a good keyword to use. Eh, sell for like 20 bucks. It's worth picking up for $4. I just love this stuff, so put it right there. 
All right, here we have a nice Mavis chocolate tin. It's in pretty decent shape. Normally when you see these, the front and top is all defaced and there's lots of color loss and you can't see the words that well. So this is nice, great coloring for Valentine's Day too. So that's a good keyword to use for this. You can probably get like 20 to $25 out of it. So for two bucks, it's nice and light. I'll definitely pick this up. All right, I really like the Raleigh's Pure Ground Ginger Tin. It's an eight ounce tin, $5. It's mostly full, but most importantly to me is that the condition is really nice. Cause remember people are buying this for display. So a lot of times you see this like really yellowed in this white part here. Um, you know, the bars are discolored, but this looks really nice. So for $5, we're gonna, we're gonna pick this up. It's great all around. All right, as we've talked about many times, dairy products sell well including old cartons. Uh, this one is Kent Dairy Products. Uh, this milk carton goes back to Auburn, New York. So it's pretty old. So uh, not one that you're gonna see come on the market often because obviously these things got thrown out a lot. So not many of them exist and it's in good shape. It's not crushed or anything like that. So I really like this. Look at this. Very cool piece. So, yeah, let's pick this up. All right, there's a few other things on the table. McCoy's cod liver oil extract tablets. Uh, not that uncommon of an item. Um, eight bucks. It's a little too high for that one. Uh, so this, though, is much more uncommon. In fact, you just don't come across it much at all. The Mohegan um, nutmeg tin. So this is cool. Tin's a nice shape. It has the uh, Indian imagery on here, which will make it uh, nice and collectible. Uh, it is also uh, a New York brand, and we're gonna pick it up for the five bucks. People love things like this in their pantry. Cool piece. Now, by the way, if you're wondering about these at $200 a set, I would say that is max, max, max market value, retail value on that probably sell for less than that, especially with some of the labels being faded or missing. I don't know, maybe, yeah, see, it looks like it's missing on this one. So that's, in case you're wondering, that's why I'm leaving them here. So moving on from over there to over here, you'll see this Lion King bag. Mrs. Primetime actually has this. We have this in our store right now with all of these items and probably more in it. And we just can't sell it for some reason. I don't know why, so I'm not going to pick up another one. All right, now to the side of the Lion King bag, we've got this really cool vintage metal nutcracker. I love the look of these little bowed areas. It's really neat and it's strong and sturdy. This thing is awesome. Only three bucks. I think I could get at least $20 out of it. So really easy to list and ship. Worst case too, if it didn't sell for some reason, I'll just keep it for me, but I, I really love this piece. All right, some of you probably saw the clock over here, but just so you know, the sticker price, 200 bucks. So I'm gonna pass on that. And the records are just, you know, the standard old band, big band records and stuff, nothing of any value in here, unfortunately. There are also some songbooks in here, by the way, but as cool as this is, the Army songbook from 1941, and I love the image on it and stuff, it's a very common book, so it's not even worth $10, actually, believe it or not. So uh, for that reason, these types of things, um, uh, passing this up, old hymns book, songs of liberty, stuff like that. Okay, so that's where we were. There's a table over here that has these bird's eye diamond matches uh, in the original boxes like this. Look at them, it's full box there. Let's see if this one, no, this one's empty. So we've got an empty one and a full one. So four bucks a piece. Yeah, I'll pick them both up for sure. Uh, just make sure you ship them ground shipping. All right, well, this doll's kind of interesting. It's pretty big, it's only five bucks. The eyes move when you tilt the head, see that? 
But um, unfortunately, it has all this cracking and chipping on the side, so mm -hmm. that's why I'm not going to pick it up. Uh, although it would be interesting to put in a refrigerator for Mrs. Primetime. <laughs> we probably owe her one of those soon, so I'm going to have to be on the lookout. <laughs> Right, so that's the kitchen area, and there is one upstairs to explore, so we're gonna head up that way. All right, so there is this interesting Hard Rock Cafe quilt. It's definitely cool, but it's a hundred bucks. So I'll leave it here for the hundred, but very neat item for sure. Okay, so that's the staircase area I just came off, and that opens up into this room here. There are some shirts I haven't looked at yet, but I heard that the person who lived here is a Hard Rock Cafe fan. And certain Hard Rock Cafe items are good to get, especially if they're from hard to find or hard to get to places. You can see here it's $10 a sweatshirt, which I normally wouldn't pay. However, we have an interesting Hard Rock Kowloon shirt, which is in the Hong Kong area, and it's an extra large. So, I'm gonna pick this up because that, because that is a tricky one to find. You generally don't even see any Hard Rock Kowloon items, you know, when going out to sale. So this is an interesting one and uh, I'm gonna grab it. All right, uh, this side of the shirt has been pretty disappointing. It's mostly modern sports teams like Buffalo Bills and stuff, Syracuse, some golf shirts. Golf shirts could be good, but just not the ones that I'm seeing here. Um, this one I thought was a little interesting, Holiday Inn Crown Plaza. I just don't know that there'd be a big market for that. Um, you know, some Tostitos tournament and stuff. This is interesting, uh, uh, Andrino Argenti. Uh, that's an old brand. They made like these novelty golf shirts and stuff. And uh, this one looked a little interesting with some of the words on it, but yeah, I just don't see a market for it right now. So. I'm gonna leave these here. Plus the other thing is shirts are five bucks a piece, which is more than I normally like to pay for them. So I'd be a little extra careful on those. All right, moving over from here. Uh, I was looking here on the floor of the closet and I did see a DVD and VCR combo player, which you are generally looking for uh, when hunting for treasures, reselling, um, but couple things. One is brand. Brand's important and Sylvania is not a great brand. It's pretty common. Uh, the brand is. Now this is a more vintage piece. It does have the instructions and the remote control. I didn't even test it to see if it works because the buy-in price is $20, which is more than you want to pay. You really want to usually be at like 10 bucks or so, even a little less sometimes. Sometimes you get them for $5 um, and it would sell for like 40 to 50. So that's why I'm going to leave it here. All right, so on the other side of the bed, there are some Hard Rock Cafe shirts, but unfortunately they're all from very common places like New York and Chicago. There's no distinctive imagery on it or anything. You know, Orlando, New Orleans, Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe stuff is usually pretty cool, but um, Hard Rock Cafe, Lake Tahoe shirts don't really sell well. You know, Las Vegas, Boston, it goes on and on and on. So I was hoping we'd get some good vintage tees here but uh, looks like that's not gonna be the case. All right, so although the shirts did not work out, I looked over here and I saw these cool little booklets, Endless Summer Quarterly, this one's from 98, and it's got the Beach Boys on it. And this is just not something that you come across often. It's got some pictures of them in there, some things that uh, are inserted, some cool articles, and then, We've got another one here, and then this is another Beach Boys one as well. Um, uh, Brian Wilson's Imagination. So, oh, look at this. There's an inscription inside. David, good to see you, and Lee in Nashville. Hope you like the record. Brian, wait a minute. Are there other signatures in here? I was hoping there'd be a Beach Boys one. Let's see on this one. No at least not on the inside flap no but uh wow that's cool that's an added bonus oh by the way 
Um, if you think that this is a guarantee that someone's not going to peek in my box, I wish I had filmed it. I had to bust out the primetime stun gun because someone actually went over to this. It says sold on it and literally picks it up and starts looking through it. Like, wait, what? <laughs> For real? Are you serious? It says sold in red. People just don't read sometimes. It's just crazy. Next to where I found those booklets, uh, there is this cool uh, thermometer. It's in the frame here. It does work. I like the picture of the lady here. She looks cool. And uh, Wall and Heaven from Auburn, New York. 30 bucks though is the buy-in. And I, I really just don't know what the market would be for that. Uh, so that might be a little too high as a buy-in on that. So I'm gonna leave that there, but uh, just thought I'd show it to you because I think it's a cool piece. All right, so that's where we came from, and there's actually only one other room here to look at upstairs. And uh, this jumped out to me right here. This is the Atlanta Braves foam tomahawk. So it's double-sided. It's really cool, if you remember the chant that they used to do and stuff. So it's a neat piece. It's in great shape. Colors are bold. Um, right now, cheapest one is 40 bucks, and uh, plus the shipping, actually. Shipping would be added on to that. So I'm gonna grab this. Uh, I think we could do good with this one. Light, easy to ship, first class. I was thinking about the Toronto Blue Jays one, but that just doesn't have as much history behind it, and it doesn't have a date on it, unlike that one. Uh, plus, it has a, you know, like a crack area or a split near the beak, and it even has some of the foam that's come off. So for that reason, I'm gonna leave this here, but that is a great find, wow. All right, so there's my box. And then, ooh, look at that Beach Boy sign, that's cool, 30 bucks though. But um, over here, you can see it says miscellaneous papers, a dollar each. They're not really papers per se, they're more sports program magazines. So I was looking through them and if you could see this, some of them are actually labeled and say autographs on them. This is me after digging through them. So um, I then started to look down here. Now, because this is minor league, so it won't be that big of a deal unless the autograph is by someone who went to the major leagues. But I started digging through these and I'm like, why are there newspapers in all of these? And it looks like the person stuffed like some extra things in them. And so I was going through and you know, I was going like this and looking, and look at that, autograph by Cito Gaston. I am a baseball fan, so I remember Cito Gaston was the uh, manager of the Blue Jays. And then you have some other uh, players and um, uh, names for autographs here. And I was going through it and flipping it, and look at this, right there. There's autographs right there, so that's really cool. So like some of these are, are definitely worth picking up. Anything with an autograph in it, um, I'm definitely interested in. So I'm gonna keep digging through these and see if I find anything else worth grabbing out of here. Oh, and if you're wondering on this one, the autographs are in the back. There's a bunch of them. I'll have to work through later, figure out who they are, but uh, there you can see. There's one, two, three, four, five at least. I don't know if there's any anywhere else, but probably that's, that's all there are on on that page for this book. All right, so I looked through the rest of them. This is the oldest one I found, the Red Sox 1990 yearbook, but it's not worth anything. So uh, we're gonna stick with these two here. These were the only ones that I saw that said that there were any autographs in it. So, and I did just for the heck of it, just thumb through a couple of the other ones uh, just to make sure um, there wasn't, you know, other autographs in you know the other magazines but uh there weren't in the ones i checked so but it just goes to show just skim through them because every once in a while you might find a little surprise like that all right now you probably saw these newspapers here to my left and i was looking through them because these would only be a buck a piece uh, each and by far the most famous sports picture in syracuse history is the one that's on the post standard they have this uh, picture up at varsity pizza uh, right near Syracuse University campus. So this is when they won their uh, only national championship in 2003. You can see Jerry McNamara there. 
Uh, Carmelo Anthony's down there on the floor. Everyone's jumping all over him. So uh, <laughs> this is uh, really cool to have this. And uh, plus, look at this. We've got um, some other sections as well. So this one here and then this one as well. So I'm just going to pick up this little bundle here. This will be great. You know, Syracuse fans are going to love to have the original thing right here. So nice. Go Cuse. All right, everyone. So there's one more area to explore, which would be the basement. So let's head downstairs and see if there's any treasures down there. All right. Well, let's head down the stairs. Carpeted stairs for once, not creepy stairs and not a descent that looks like that I'm going to get killed by Freddy Krueger. So let's go explore here. All right, so this is the basement area. It's actually pretty small. So um, you know, there are some uh, baseball pennants here, but not any that I'm real interested in. Um, Syracuse ones, not ones that are like super old for the most part. I mean, that one is the 1971 Tigers one. There's Blue Jays. A lot of this stuff has been individually marked. There's some dollar stuff here that I uh, already looked through. There's some scrapbooks, but the scrapbooks have um, you know, a lot of old newspaper clippings in them. There's piles of them. They're different prices, like 25. I, I would have actually just got this one just for this, but it's split, unfortunately, because I really like the images on here, nice and colorful. But then there's other ones that are like, I think the other ones are all $40, so $40. Yeah, $40, $40. That's a cool little sign here from an old restaurant. It does have a little, little creasing in it up top. It's uh, 20 bucks. And you know sometimes you'll see these and they have like little calendars that you flip over with the year. That's what I look for more. So um, I'll keep that one there. And then there's Barbie ornaments, five bucks a piece. So these are you know always worth taking a look at uh, in general. They'll sell for like 15 to 25 bucks or so. So I'm gonna pass on these, just let someone else grab them. But uh, just wanted to mention them because you know sometimes I look for Barbie stuff. Oh, there's various uh, priced tchotchkes here on the shelves. Um, you know, I've, you've seen me pick one of these up before. This is 25 bucks. And usually they'll have certain cities and stuff on them. It's a, it's a common type of item, but um, depending on the location on it, you might wanna uh, I'll pick it up. So uh, then we've got some other like miscellaneous items on the table, like Gene Autry five dollar photo. Uh, fortunately, there's not too many people looking for Gene Autry stuff. There are some old yearbooks. I would have picked these up if they had a cheaper buy-in price. Um, a lot of them are from uh, Auburn High School, and Auburn schools. The arrow is the most common one you'll find for Auburn, but they're 20 bucks a piece. That being said, it's worth flipping through them to see if there's any uh, things that are hidden inside of them, which I did already, <laughs> but I uh, didn't find anything hidden inside. So sometimes that can make it worth the 20, depending on what's stuffed in there. Might not even want it uh, for the book. Uh, the most tempting thing in this room for me, uh, by the way, if you're looking at this, this is actually, you'll come across these as um, California uh, Disneyland uh, a tray. It's, it's not really worth that much, but uh, even though it looks cool. This, I really like, the New York Mets uh, garbage can. Uh, I don't normally see this style. Uh, the problem is, I like the colors, but there's too much flaking of the coloring on it, and that's a problem for me. I do pick up garbage cans sometimes, they're real vintage ones. The one you really wanna look for for the New York Mets is the one that commemorates their uh, championship. Uh, that they won in the 60s, the World Series. So that one could sell for like tons of money. And there's some little banks and stuff over here, but they're 20 to 30 bucks per bank. And I'm gonna leave them here. Uh, there's also this elephant bank here, which is cool, but it's a uh, hundred bucks. So I'm gonna pass on the elephant bank. Uh, some miscellaneous books and programs here, but nothing um, you know, worth a lot of money. I, again, I, flip through a lot of this stuff. It's like, you know, some old school books and some you know, church related books, nothing that great. Um, there's an old uh, 
jukebox here for $1,000. I'll pass on that. All the Hard Rock keys in this uh, trunk are five bucks, but I looked through them and they're all common cities. This looked interesting, but unfortunately all the spines are separated. So I'm gonna pass on it for that reason. So um, that pretty much is gonna wrap us up here. I have this big box filled with items. So we really loaded up and now it's time for us to get that final price. Wow, folks, what a cold, windy, rainy, nasty day. But I think that worked to my benefit because I think it kept a bunch of the uh, customers away, as did the difficult to find location. And uh, when it was all said and done, we really loaded up, hit the jackpot today with all of that ephemera, especially that shoe box, that $2 shoe box, just absolutely crushed it. I just knew from then on out, it didn't even matter if I got anything else, that I was good to go just with that uh, shoe box. But a total price for everything is da 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 $150. So uh, I, I'm just thrilled. I, I just am so happy with all those great items. Just so much vintage goodness there. So it was a great day. It was fun to get out, uh, get to another sale. And uh, I just been uh, having a blast. So um, hopefully the weather's going to start getting warmer. We're about to head into daylight savings time and, uh, estate sales should start kicking up a little bit more once we get into the spring. So, uh, hopefully we'll get some more, uh, up on the channel. So been a little bit slow lately, but, uh, anyway, um, we're going to head back to primetime treasure headquarters as usual. We're going to check in on Daisy. Let me know your favorite item or items uh, were that I picked up today really was a nice assortment. Thank you, by the way, to uh, Joyce for helping out and picking up uh, the carnival glass item, my first one. So that was awesome. Oh, and before I forget, I want to give a special shout out to one of my youngest fans. I was talking to his relative whose name is Shonda. She's the one who gave me the Coca-Cola ephemera uh, towards the beginning of the video. And she told me that she watches the channel with her grandson, whose name is Dake, D-A-K-E. And that because of the interest from watching the videos, she took him to his first estate sale. He was all excited and he got his first item. And in honor of the channel, he gave his first item a double tap. So huge shout out to Dake. Thank you so much. That is hilarious. That made my day and cracked me up. If the channel could inspire young kids to start going out to estate sales, wow, that is absolutely amazing. So uh, give them a shout out too in the comments because I just thought that was really cool. All right, so now let's uh, head inside and check out and see what Daisy's up to. Hey. Who's the little sleepy head with a haircut right now? Whose little tail is twitching? <laughs> Daisy, what's going on? How are you right now? Look at you. Boy, the last time we saw you, you were just a big giant ball of fur. But uh, you definitely are looking like the diva that you are. There we go, Daisy. Sunshine is out. She was guarding the treasures this morning, doing a really great job of that as usual. But um, she's in her usual spot, the place we call the perch, because she is uh, dutifully waiting for Mrs. Primetime to get home. This is usually where she'll sit when she um, is waiting for her, because she could see Miss Primetime coming down the street, and then you know she goes on full alert mode. But She'll also pay very close attention if any other dogs come by, you know, um, and, you know, and other people walking by, and she'll let us know. So she's very good with that. Right, Daisy? All right. Well, I can't wait to show Daisy all the great things that we got. Um, give her some double taps, of course, and some uh, belly rubs and chin scratches and stuff in the comments. I'll be sure to pass those along as always. She's very spoiled with that. She loves it. And uh, if you want me to toss a treat her way, let me know. I'll definitely do that as well. So uh, uh, just just give me a give me a, a notification about that in the comment section. I'll pass a pass a little extra treat along to Daisy for you. So thanks everybody. I had fun with this video, and I look forward to seeing you back at the next one.
Take care. Daisy, it's Gizmo. <laughs> <laughs>